Okay, so we start at the uh, presentation uh, of financials for a strategic marketing plan. Within that, as we saw, the last section relates to contingency plan, and uh, this was the last uh, slide that. I used in that session, which deals with the impact of high leverage option versus low leverage option. And if, if you remember, high leverage men, meant a high total fixed cost and uh, low leverage meant that a low uh, fixed cost with respect to uh, low total fixed cost with respect to low total uh, variable cost. And we saw that, uh, that in case of uh, the highly leveraged plan that means high fixed cost, which is obvious because high fixed cost means your break even point has climbed upwards. And therefore, a the same 10 percent decline in sales uh, can uh, double your loss and the same 10 percent increase in sales revenue can quadruple your uh, uh, profit. So, this plan therefore, becomes highly uh, sensitive to this uh, revenue revenue growth or revenue fall. And when you are getting into this option of taking new products to the existing market or new product existing products to a new market in both cases, you have options which is relating to like we saw in case of Woodland in their foray into China, which is taking their existing products into a new market, they could set up a manufacturing facility in China, sourcing local material, locally manufacturing. Obviously, then their variable cost per unit comes down, but because they have to set up a new plant, uh, because they have to have uh, people uh, and other associated financial costs with respect to additional working capital and so on, they are, uh, they are variable costs will be low, fixed cost will be high if they have a local manufacturing versus if they actually source the material uh, from their Indian plant, then there will be additional freight and all the additional costs relating to uh, this longer supply chain and so on. And uh, therefore, their variable costs will go up, but the fixed cost will be practically nothing, because uh, they are leveraging their existing uh, plant and machinery in India. In the same way, uh, uh, in the Woodland case, we were talking about their interest in introducing new uh, products, skin care products or personal care products for adventure enthusiasts, for trekking, hiking enthusiasts. That means, before, besides offering to them footwear and uh, you can also offer to them maybe tents or um, uh, skin care products or uh, rucksacks or um, you know associated many other products. Again, you can choose to either manufacture these products in which case it is a high fixed cost oriented strategy or you may decide to outsource them, uh, procure them from other vendors and brand label it with your own brand, have maybe captive suppliers or maybe a wide range of suppliers. In all of these cases, you will have a higher variable cost because you are buying from somebody. So, you can only add uh, uh, in, in some way some trading margin to it. 
uh, but your fixed cost will be nothing right and uh, again therefore uh, in this case is uh, the sales volume will be uh, a critical uh, understanding the sales volume uh, it's the, the downside will rapidly uh, erode your profit margin uh, profit uh, volume and upside will rapidly raise your uh, profit outcome from your the plan. In fact, it will be interesting for you to note here that there are some major uh, players in this market say for example, Nike uh, who uh, seem to have no manufacturing facility of their own at all and possibly because they developed this whole strategy uh, focused mainly on marketing. They wanted to keep it on a low leverage, so that when they come into a new market the growth of these new range of products um, uh, may be uh, sensitive to many uncertainties. So, therefore, it is better to remain at a low leverage level and uh, so that the uh, wrong forecast or decline in sales corresponding to the forecast uh, does not affect your overall uh, profit uh, so uh, strongly, uh, so acutely. We will now uh, take up a couple of other concepts again relating to the financial analysis uh, uh, contained within a strategic plan, uh, which is goes beyond normal um, uh, statements of revenues, costs and so on. So, one of them is concept of discounted cash flow, which I am sure again you know from your introductory courses that 500 rupees that you uh, get uh, today uh, is much far more valuable than the 500 rupees that you will get 6 months later or 1 year later. And that is because it is not only because of the inflation or uh, uh, the interest that you are losing on that 500 rupees, uh, but it is also because of the many uncertainties always inherent uh, in any future projection. So, it is always better and as we saw in the previous uh, discussion on working capital that uh, obviously, if you are collecting your uh, receivables today, uh, it is far better than actually postponing those, because it will create a higher load on your uh, working capital. Uh, it will mean increasing interest burden, uh, because you have to borrow more money from the bank. And uh, also there are this whole concept of uh, the discounts that you need to assign uh, to the cash flow that comes in later. Marketing has to be specially sensitive uh, to this time value of money. Uh, and that is why you will see in marketing we often actually give cash discount uh, for immediate payment and, uh, and, and uh, we prefer to take credit card payment, because that is money that is going to go into your bank account tomorrow, even though uh, the banking system, the credit card system might take away uh, 1 percent or 2 percent from your earnings. So, uh, we prefer to take uh, credit card payment as a seller, uh, as a marketer uh, rather than postponing uh, the receipt of the payment uh, from the customer and we are prepared to give that 1 percent, 2 percent charge to the bank, uh, because money in the bank today is far more valuable than the money that will come in tomorrow. On the presentation uh, or discussion that we had uh, in the last session, uh, I have received some questions. Uh, which I will briefly clarify. Uh, first of all, with respect to this important uh, understanding of two marketing 
uh, strategy options option A and option B uh, with a discounted cash flow with a discount rate of uh, 15 percent. So, this uh, how did we arrive at this 0 0.87 or 0 0.756? This is uh, very simple. Uh, the formula is 1 divided by uh, 1 plus r. So, in the first instance it is 1 divided by 1.15 because r is equal to 0 0.15 15 percent and therefore, this leads to uh, something like 0 0.87 and uh, similarly in the next one it will be 1 divided by 1 plus r square and that will lead to 1 upon 1.15 square and that will lead to 0 0.756. Okay. And again the question is that which option is better? The point is that in as you can see in case of B the payback is faster. Uh, because in A we are still at minus 45,000 in the second year. So, it is faster. So, it as we discussed it depends on your company's uh, cash flow cash reserve situation. If you are able to um, handle this then this might be uh, even though uh, it is option A leads to a longer payback because we are becoming positive only in the third year. But however, as you can see here the rate of growth in the fourth year, fifth year is uh, much better than the rate of growth in option B. So, perhaps this is actually a, a newer product or a, taking existing product to a new market. So, in new initiatives it takes a little time for it to take off, it does guzzle uh, uh, cash. Uh, so, it depends on your company's cash flow position therefore, what you will choose between option A and option B. Also, in terms of uh, the both options actually have positive net present value at the end of 5 year, here we have 60,880 versus 91,530. This could be 91.53 million or uh, 60.88 million depends on how you are actually taking these other numbers. The issue is therefore, both may be a positive in terms of net present value, but uh, these are the market dynamics that one has to look at and look at your company's current strategic priorities. And we will discuss uh, uh, just uh, in a little while uh, what are these strategic priorities and how we should actually fit these two uh, different uh, op options within an overall uh, strategic framework of the organization. R is the retention rate, I is the existing uh, and is the interest rate uh, and we have said margin is sales revenue minus the variable costs. Now, there are a number of issues that uh, come up. Uh, for example, this calculation I suppose uh, you have all been able to uh, do very well because this is 1 plus uh, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.8. So, this is equal to 1 minus 0 0.7. So, is equal to 0 0.3 and 2000 divided by 0 0.3 uh, leads to this 6666.67. Now, uh, the important point here uh, to note is that even before that I think I would like to point out something very interesting is that suppose this figure now there are suppose this is the as you know this is the retention rate what percentage of your customers you hope to retain uh, after the period the next strategic period it could be one year two years three years. Now, if this goes down to 0 0.7 say for example, uh, then what happens? Then this becomes uh, 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.7 is 1 divided by uh, minus 
0.6 equal to 0.4 and this is very interesting that this uh, 2000 divided by 0 0.4 is 5000. So, you see here that you are there is only a small reduction here, but the reduction in your uh, customer lifetime value is 5000 divided by 6666.67 is that is equal to 0.75. So, 25 percent uh, reduction is happening uh, in the customer's lifetime value just for uh, retention percentage going down from 80 percent to 70 percent. So, 10 percent reduction in uh, retention rate can lead to 25 percent reduction in uh, uh, the customer lifetime value. In the same way, you can calculate that if uh, this goes up uh, uh, that means, uh, if your retention rate instead of 0 0.8 becomes 0 0.9, the growth uh, will be uh, very significant. Uh, so, retention rate therefore, is, is uh, very well correlated or rather very significantly correlated with the kind of customer lifetime value and how customer lifetime value will be an important consideration in uh, your uh, overall uh, strategy formulation. Uh, how this part of the marketing strategy creates a significant asset uh, um, or rather a significant uh, determinant for the corporate strategy is what we will uh, see uh, uh, just in a little while.